All right, we're kind of in the home stretch on Hellboy here. This should be the last work in progress on this. So the Hellboy figure is done, except for the missing piece that I have. So no telling when I'll get that, unfortunately. Um, I'm hoping I'll get it soon, but my guess is it'll be at least a month, which really sucks because this um, has been a long project. It's just really detailed, a lot of stuff going on. So I probably have, and the kit quality is really good. I will say that, and this is not just this particular kit, but in general, a lot of these factories use really shitty resin. This one is one of them. And I say that because it is crazy brittle. Um, I dropped a piece the other day, literally from like six inches off the top of the workbench. It broke, the piece went flying, and I have no clue where it is. So it's it's just brittle. I mean, if you drop a piece, you're screwed. It's gonna, it's gonna shatter, it's gonna break. So it's just a real shame that these factories are used. I mean, the, the detail's great, the casting's great, nothing wrong with that, but the resin itself is, in my opinion, crap. They put a filler in it, it's like, it's, I don't know if they put fiberglass in it or what they put in it, but it's not, this factory is not good. Um, it's just too damn brutal. I should be able to drop a, I should be able to drop a piece from, from my desktop to the floor and it should bounce. It should not shatter. And I'll show you what it broke. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Let's see. Uh, where is it? Oh crap. <laughs> Uh, oh, this piece. So, this pipe. This pipe should have another part to it that plugs in to one of these pieces. I literally dropped it. I'm not going to do it again because it's going to break. I, literally, it literally, it, I was fitting it into the piece to see where it goes. I dropped it from about eight inches off the top of my workbench. It hit here, the piece shattered, and it went flying. I cleaned my work area. I'll probably find it like in a year when I'm cleaning in a corner somewhere. But this should not break from dropping it this far. It's it's just really got me frustrated. Um, same thing happened with one of the horns on these guys. I dropped it. The tip went flying. That happened when I was first test fitting this. But it's my little gripe about this kit. Sculpt is great. Casting quality is great. The details are there. The resin is shit. So I really wish um, the producer, I don't know if it's the producer's fault or the factory's fault, but it's just frustrating, especially when you get this far into a project and that little thing right there is gonna cost me about an hour, hour and a half worth of work. So I have to re-sculpt this back in. It's just, I'm just annoyed. <laughs> so anyway, back to the base. So last, uh, last night what I did while I was waiting for stuff to dry, I went ahead and base coated the, uh, the heads that go on the side. All these horns come out, they're magnetic, and they are specific to a certain head. So, um, <laughs> I don't know why they did that. They should have just made them all interchangeable, personally, because they're all sculpted exactly the same. But you do have to find out which head they go into. And I'll probably label, some of these have labels on them. Actually, all the heads have labels on them. But they actually do fit, I have them, they do fit in a specific spot. I mean, I'm gonna take the horns off so they don't go flying. This paint. I put this on last night, but the paint was still a little wet. Um, but these all these all these heads fit do fit. They they all fit better in a certain spot. Um, so anyway, my client will have to kind of figure that out a little bit. So the what I did for uh, this paint, this the color on these guys is this uh, Rust-Oleum metallic finish. This color is called Bright Coat Copper. The gold is rest only metallic, gold, bright, shiny finish. And I tell you what, it's just the bomb. <laughs> it looks freaking, I just sprayed it right over the factory primer. It looks awesome. This um, copper almost has a mirror. If this, if this is a smooth surface, this would almost look uh, copper plated. It's that good. Um, I am going to do a wash over. This is going to get knocked down and stuff, but it's, it's impressive. Uh, the gold, not so much gold plated looking, but real bright and shiny, really nicely, real nice paint. Um, I don't think I've ever used this before. I think I tried the, not in this, this line, the metallic finish. I think I tried the, the chrome or the mirror 
and it looked really good. It just never dried. I think I put it on too heavy. I was trying testing some chrome finishes. So anyway, back to this. My rant's over. That's what I did. I base coated those last night. They dried. Now, I did the skulls. I showed that in the previous video. They got two skulls that just kind of sit out here. Then you have these two, these three pieces right here. These two go together. I'll end up gluing these together. Um, so my class, one of the things my clients assemble and this piece and they just sit on the base wherever you want them or you don't have to have them I, I, I'm kind of thinking if you include them put a key on the base somewhere just so you have a place for it this part is the head of one of the golden soldiers and there's the eyes and then it's got all this mechanical stuff inside so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I looked up and basically everything's gold on this but I am gonna go through I'm gonna pick out some details and just kind of just real quick do a couple little detail paint job paintings on this but I'm gonna knock this down too I'm gonna do a wash like a sepia tone wash over it. it'll add a little warmth to the gold and it'll bring out the details um, so we're gonna do that to this also and then I'm probably gonna uh, I'll probably spray with a satin finish so it's a little shiny uh, for the heads we're gonna do a wash on these guys give them a little aged look so let's pull these all off or And I think we're going to work on these first and then we'll tackle the base. So the base is pretty, pretty elaborate. So you have a wood texture on the bottom here. I thought these columns were stone at first, but they're actually wood, it's splintered wood. So the top band, the bottom band, these columns in the center of these panels are wood. So I'll paint those wood, do all that, get that done. And then I'm going to go in and just kind of do a little light dry brushing on these uh, reliefs to kind of, of some metallic. On the top, we've got two different types of stone. We've got kind of a gravel in the middle and like a cobblestone on the on the on the on the outside. So there's a ring of stone here, and then on the inside, it's a different type of stone. So we'll paint those two different colors. And there are two skulls embedded in the base, so those will get painted last. And there's a uh, we have a research uh, where's it with the um, bureau for paranormal research and defense so that's embedded in the stone it's kind of hard to, even though it's hard to see because of all the texture so we got some work ahead of us so i wanted to base coat these last night so they had a chance to dry really really well i am just for the hell of it i'm going to test on the back of one of these because i have had for whatever reason um i've had uh, rattle can paint lift or lift not lift but come off when i do uh, like an acrylic wash for some reason i don't know why they shouldn't because it's a solvent based paint but for this i'm going to mix up a i'm going to break it break out my acrylics i'm using the uh the proto kind of as a guide that's what my client wants so we're going to we're gonna use that. Let me pull that back up. I don't think I have any down. I need to download some pictures of it. I don't remember if they did a patina or if they just did a weathering. Patina might look good on it. So maybe that. Give me a second. Ah. Come on, switch accounts. There we go. So no, I saw two faces on my personal page and then I have my Matt Smalls custom page, and I'm, I'm constantly getting messages on both, so I have to switch between accounts all the time. And every time I post a, a picture or a review of a statue, people ask me if they can buy it, and like, and I'm like, no. It's, and I specifically say it's not for sale. <laughs> it's, it's like, watch the video or look at the post, guys. Okay. So it looks like they just kind of did a... Yeah, they did like a greenish brown wash on them. So I'm gonna do that, looks good. Okay, so let's do that first. That way they can get those drying and then I can do the wood. Um, I don't know if I'll get the base done today. Um, we'll see. Usually I can get a base done today, but this thing's pretty freaking elaborate. Um, so my mind is, and I'm also working on a, uh, a print job at the same time. So my brain is kind of scattered right now as far as getting this and that done at the same time. Okay, so we're going to do, uh, I'm going to mix up some cobalt green. And maybe a little, um, oh, son of a, 
biscuit. Oh, I gotta pause. Okay, sorry. I think it seems to be one of those days. <laughs> I went to go pick up my tube of white paint. I squeezed it and the lid was, the top wasn't on all the way and it got everywhere. Um, so for this, I just need a, a big brush. I need a crap towel. It's one of the towels, really shitty towel. You can see it's been used and abused. That's what I use for wiping off stuff like this. So I think we're gonna do first. So this is a uh, green cobalt and um, burnt, not burnt umber. I think it's raw umber. What is it? Uh, what did I put out here? My gosh, my brain is fried today. Burnt umber. It's burnt umber. Burnt umber. Sorry, I thought it was raw umber. Raw umber has a little yellow in it. I'm gonna test this just a little bit on the back side here because, like I said, I've had instances where, for whatever reason, um, I've had the this paint kind of. Soften the rattle can, and it shouldn't do that. So I'm going to test it on the back here. So I'm going to I dab it on, and then with the actually maybe new, new towels. So probably a little got too much paint on it. It's kind of rough. You just kind of wipe it off real lightly. do that and this is just straight paint I'm not uh, thinning it or anything and uh, this will this will warm this up really nicely you don't want to load your your brush you want to just put it on I'm just gonna work a little area at a time dab it in You don't want to dry too much before you go to try to wipe it off. Then, and then just take a soft towel and just kind of wipe. You can also just go back and dry brush on top of this, which I'll probably to do also. Actually, that might be a better plan of attack. Just gonna kind of put this on first. Stippling on this burnt umber. It's knocking down the. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And I got a game plan. Sometimes it takes me a minute to figure out what I want to do or how I'm going to do it. And this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to stipple this on. I'm going to stipple some of the green on. And then once it's dry, I'll dry brush some of the, I'll spray some of that rattle can into a cup and I'll dry brush it back on top. And that'll give me all the highlights and everything. Okay, yeah, I'm liking the way this is looking right now. my brush off and try to take some off. Okay. So the right's got that on there, the left doesn't. So it's brought it down a little bit, added some kind of tarnish to it. So I'm gonna put this aside and do the other ones and then we'll come back. Okay, so I did the other heads. I also did the horns with that uh, raw 
burnt umber. Now I'm going to go in here with this uh, cobalt green. I'm going to do this a little less, a little more sparingly. I'm going to test again, test it on the back here a little bit. This will kind of add the patina, since this could be copper. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm just gonna do this kind of lightly. I don't want too much of this on here. more down these recesses than anything so that's where it would gather. Okay. So that's what we look like now. And once that dries, we'll dry, I'll uh, dry brush on some of the initial color. And then we should look pretty good, I think. These all don't have to look the same. I mean, they're gonna, it's metal, so it all kind of would react differently and have different amounts of aging and patina. Let's not drop another piece because God knows what happened if I dropped one of these and shattered into a billion pieces. Got way too much green on my palette here. I need to learn to start putting less paint out so I don't waste it. I'll just show this all on camera. This goes this this part's going pretty quick. Oops, got a little too much there. It's okay. We'll just leave it.
I like that. I can still really, really get a sense of that first color I put down, that real shine. You can still see it, even though I'm doing all this and kind of adding all this stuff to it. You can still see it through all this, which is it's a really nice, um, it's a really nice spray paint. It seems to be holding up well to this. I'm kind of getting it up in the eye sockets and stuff a little bit more since it's kind of a deep recess. And by the time I get done with all these steps, the first head should be dry enough. This acrylic dries pretty quick. I'm not sure exactly what type of paint this Rust-Oleum is. I'm not sure if it's an enamel. Um, if it's an enamel, it usually takes a really long time to dry, but it seemed to dry pretty well overnight. And um, enamels are tough paints, but they take the longest to dry or to actually cure. Dry is one. Curing and drying are two things. Curing means that it is all the way through dry, top layer to bottom. Dry just means you can. And you can handle it. Acrylics dry. Solvent paints cure because they're going through a chemical reaction. So drying usually deals with air and uh, curing deals with a chemical reaction. So it's, it's different. I went a little overboard on this guy, that's okay. It's gonna be different. Okay. Now the horns, these are a little tricky because I have to hand hold them. I should have just left them in the heads to be honest. That probably would have been the smart thing to do. Just get a little, a little messy. Someone asked me if, <laughs> and he's like, I noticed in all your videos your thumb is always painted. Is there a reason you do that? It's like, no, it's just because I don't wear gloves and it gets paint on all. The thumb is the one that gets all the paint on it. It's not a fashion statement or anything. Do not, oh, this. <laughs> a little too much. I just got a little bit too much, that's no big deal. All right, we'll leave it. Okay. Let me clean this brush out. Bit. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this. We're going to decant it, which simply means spraying into a cup. some of it in the cup here. You can actually airbrush this. Uh, you have to let it gas out, so which means it, there's still gases in it. Um, but uh, you can airbrush, you just gotta let it gas out and then do that. All right, so for the dry brushing, we'll get a, um, let's get a big soft brush. And I will need a paper towel. Put that to the side for now. That paint. 
in the first head. So this is already dry to the touch. So we're gonna get some on our brush. And we're gonna test the back side. Paint's pretty thin. I'm using kind of a soft brush because I don't mind if the bristles get down in the recesses a little bit. That's really about it. That's still pretty tacky. So the one on the left has been gone through all the steps. The one on the right hasn't been dry brushed yet. So this, this sculpt is of the little guy at the entrance to the cave of the Golden Army. That little guy that's got the cart. It's got all the stuff and he's trading. I like him, he's cool. He's got, or, actually he's the guy that made the Golden Army, I think, right? If I remember correctly, he's the guy that, that built it. I hit this with a little copper too. Let's see what this looks like. Uh, not this copper, a different copper. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna put these horns back in. On the right head. Get that going. Nope. Go there. That one goes there. You want the big hole. That one goes there. That one goes there. I think it does. We'll find out here shortly.
There we go. Some of the horns have bigger keys, and that's how you know where they go. Now what I want to do, I want to shift this a little bit because I want to, um, I want to warm it up a hair. I'm going to get a new brush and I want to do, um, liquid metals and I'm going to do this just a little bit it's got a little more red in it Just gonna warm it up a little bit. I can't tell the difference in the camera, but it's subtle. This is just a real subtle color shift. It's looking, even though it says copper on the can, it's looking a little too like warm gold to me. So I wanted to add a little more red to it. That's what I'm doing this. I'm just taking the paint right off the paper towel, just enough there to. get it all covered it's okay it just has another layer of tone to it so yeah you can just do it real quick in the top of the nose a lot actually let me go back and hit the faces a little more so that nose really shines Okay. 
Okay, I'll let those dry a good amount. This paint takes a while to dry. I think those heads look good. So I'll call those done. I'm not going to seal them. Uh, I'm just going to leave them as is. Once it's dry, this should be plenty durable enough because I got all these solvent paints on there. Uh, I don't want to lose the shininess and the dullness between the patina and everything, so that's why I'm not going to seal it. We're just going to leave it as is. Let's put those to the side. And then for the Golden Army guy, I'm going to go in here. This comes apart, this comes apart. So there's a lot of detail here. But we're going to bring most of it out with the wash, I think. I'm, I'm going to just do a few little... I'm just, I'm probably just going to like do, just go in there with some steel. I'm not going to pick a bunch of different colors. So I'm just going to get a little steel. And like, we'll pick out maybe... I like some stuff in here. Oh, it's not sticking. <laughs> I'll probably have to use a lacquer because this is a an acrylic base or an acrylic, an acrylic paint, and is not wanting to stick to that. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I broke out my good old fashioned testers and enamels. So I basically got like a copper, a black metallic, and an aluminum, and like a graphite. So just go in here and um, pick out some details. I had a brush and then I lost it. Let's use this guy right here. So I like this copper. I should brush over this stuff just fine, I think. That brush is... I've torn up my brushes over the past few days, so it's time to go back to I'll be lobbying and get some cheapo brushes. So these brush on really, these actually brush on beautifully. So I'm just gonna go real quick. Pick out some details. I won't do a whole lot of this on camera because it's not very exciting. Let's go on some copper here and there. I'm not sure how much of an engine is copper, actually probably none of it, because <laughs> it's not very heat resistant or anything. This is really not an engine, this is a, a robot. Paints have been used in years. They've all separated. Can't remember the last time I used them. Great thing about this part is that it's all banged up, so it doesn't have to be like real perfect. I'm really just going to go in here and really just real quickly add some touches of color here and there and some of these mechanical bits. Just to break up the gold. And then I'll go seal it. on it I 
thing about enamels is that they're just like super sticky. So I'm gonna do this and then I'll see it, we'll come back and do it. Okay, so I was hand painting this stuff and I, find, I, I figured it would be easier if I just do an enamel wash. So I put some, uh, shit, I had, God damn it. <laughs> some Zippo lighter fluid. This is a great thinner for enamel paints. I'm gonna put some in a cup, and this is black metallic enamel paint. I put that in there, and that's what you do with an enamel wash. And I just thin that down. It's real soupy. I may warm that up. I add a little copper to it. Make my own kind of wash here. Okay, now I got this warm kind of metallic. If I don't spill it, and I can just go in here and flood this. Like this. I'm just gonna get in all the details. And I'll let this dry for a little while. And then I'll uh, seal it and I'll go back and dry brush gold on top of it. And we'll have a nice. Looking beat up. Golden Army Soldier. It'll just take a while for this enamel, for this wash to dry. The thinner it is, the faster it dries, but the lighter fluid dries pretty quick. I don't ever use an enamel thinner, I just use lighter fluid. It works really well for this kind of thing. So that looks really nice. So I'll do that, and then uh, we'll come back. Okay, so I get everything up that enamel wash, let it dry, hit it with a flat coat. Now I'm dry brushing on two different shades of gold. The first one is uh, Vallejo liquid gold, uh, liquid metals gold, old gold, and then, on top, then I go over it with just regular gold. So the old gold's got quite a bit of red in it, which I really like. Um, just kind of warms things up a little bit, and you can see here that it's bringing out all the detail really nice in this piece. Um, so those have already been done. I'm just gonna do one real quick here on camera. On the mechanical bits, on the inside, I went really heavy with the wash, like almost to the point where you can't see the the first color that I spray painted. So this is the old gold, it's going in here. Again, this is just real quick. It's like this. And then I go over it with the gold again, just not as much. It just has like another layer of tone to it. A little bit of brightness here and there. And this is all I'm doing. I'm gonna leave the mechanical bits a little dirtier than the outside. The outside, I, I, I uh, thinned out the wash quite a bit and put it on less. Uh, I just wanted the inside to look dirtier. But there you go. So I'm gonna do that to the rest of the piece and then um, we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so the last step I'm doing on this is I'm going in with some uh, liquid, sil liquid uh, silver white gold and I'm just very lightly, while this is on the base, kind of hitting the top of it a little bit. Adding another little bit of bling to it and I think we're going to call this done. It looks really good. Um, here's the back side, a little darker, a little grungier. Here are the two parts that you can put wherever you want. And I've got the two pipes I got to paint. I'll paint those black and I got to fix that one that broke, but I think we're looking good. Uh, I'm really happy with this. Um, so the next thing I'm going to work on is I'm going to do the wood on the base and we'll do that. I got to clean up my work area a little bit. This is a very messy process doing all this stuff. So I think you can tell the difference here is very slight. This is more red, red gold, and this is a little brighter gold. So we cut the inside a little warmer, darker and the outside a little brighter. So, looking good. So once I clean up, we'll do the wood. All right, so I um, went ahead and base coated the base, and I just did that in a garagekiss.us chestnut, so it's a little lighter than I want, but it dried down pretty good, actually. Now I'm gonna go in there and do a wash. To go, um, lots of washes. <laughs> to uh, bring it down and to, um, Fill in the details. I think I'm gonna do a sepia wash. Let's see what this looks like. 
Maybe too green. I don't know. Let's see. Do a little spot here. That's actually looking pretty good. So this is the. Um, I may want a little bit darker though. This is the Vallejo inks sepia. Let me do this. Let's see how this dries down. This might dry down nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on the whole thing, and then we'll come back. Okay, so I've done a few steps since uh, <clears throat> last since I last turned the camera on. So after I did the sepia uh, ink wash, I went there with the black ink and just stippled it on there real lightly to darken it a little bit. And then I wanted to bring it down even more, so I mixed in some, uh, I made a mixture of uh, Garage Kiss that U.S. Clear Black with, uh, it's their mahogany color. And then I just misted that on, so the mahogany... Right there was clear black, lightly misted it on, so it didn't cover up what I did. It just brought the tone down, and I got a lot of paint on here. Um, so I'm going in with the hair dryer and just kind of drying it real quick. And anywhere I got little puddles, I'm just hitting, stippling with this brush like this to kind of soak up those little puddles of wash and stuff. And then once I'm done with this, I'll seal it, and then we'll start doing some dry brushing to bring out the details. And then we'll probably mist on that mahogany and dark black on top of that. Okay, so I went and sealed that, and what I've got mixed up my cup, I've got equal amounts of white uh, and burnt umber with a little bit of raw sien burnt sienna. So I got to kind of get this highlight color going on. So let me get a brush and see what this does for us. I don't want that, that's got metallic on it. This will work. Okay, so I need a crappy rag. And again, we're just gonna start up here. Start bringing out this wood grain. And that's looking about right. This, if this, if this does what I needed to do, I may just, um, I don't know, we'll see. I have, I have a look in my head that I want, and I had a series of steps I thought I was going to do, but we're going to bring this down. Bring this down. Bring this down. Bring some more light. And bring up my exposure. Okay, so right there I did some dry brushing. I'm not sure if you can see it. Camera. All this scroll work, I'm just going to try very carefully, dry brush some gold on top of it. If I'm careful, I can do it, um, and hopefully not mess up the wood. I'm going to have to stop and go to the door, there may be another package, another project, I'll be right back. Yep, another project. I got more boxes showing up these days than ever before. It's crazy. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. 
I'm gonna do this real light. My goal is to not have a hundred boxes here again like I did a couple years ago. I, I just don't have room for it, so as long as I can keep painting it and stuff out, when stuff arrives, it's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to do this. I think it's looking pretty good. And then I'll come back. Okay, so I run around around with that mix, and I've got uh, equal parts of, uh, actually got like two to one mix of white to burnt to um, burnt sienna. So I got a little brighter highlight with a little more red tint in it. And we're gonna just do one more kind of level of highlight, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with an airbrush and do some shading. And we should be right where we want to, right where I want to be. And for the shading, I'm just gonna kinda of go and hit the shadow and stuff. Corners and stuff like that to give this a little more shape. more random highlighting here not so not so even That's looking pretty good. Okay. Now, I want to dark, it looks dark in camera, but I want to darken it down a little bit overall. So I'm gonna do that with some shading here. And I thought I was good with this. Um, let's see what this looks like. I'll make sure it's not opaque. I want to do this um, transparent black with a little bit of this, just a touch of this mahogany mixed in. Damn it, too much. Because the mahogany is an opaque color, and I don't want opaque.
just kind of hitting the corners and stuff. I guess and see what I'm doing there, but I can probably see what I'm doing. Take one or two rounds, so I gotta put it on thin. Lightly building it up. I'm probably going to mist on a thin layer of that clear orange like I did for the gun handles. I'm just going to shift the color a little bit. The darkness on this down a little bit. I've got some shading going on in there. I'm gonna dump that out. Where is this? Uh... 
Okay, so I put a little transparent vivid orange in my brush. Let's see what this does. I lightly miss this on. Putting this on like a clear varnish. And I think I may go one more color on top of this. A little of the sepia ink that I did the first time around with the wash. This is the CP ink that I did when I did when I first did the wash, the first wash. I'm just missing this on, so some of my highlights gone a little, a little too orange. So I'm just kind of using this to try to knock those down a little bit. And where's the front? The front of the kit is this one right here. This is the front. This is what we're gonna see most of. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I keep saying that. I always do that, and then I'm like, oh, okay, just keep going. I got some black to this. And I'm gonna go in, get the shadows a little bit more. Should be like the last little bit here. And we'll seal it. And then we'll do some of the Like it's a real nice, lots of different tones kind of going on in this wood. Kind of real quick, just in different areas.
kind of thinner areas a little bit, looking a little flat. That looks good. So we're going to seal this and uh, we'll come back and I'll very carefully dry brush the um, the scroll work on this and uh, we'll take a look at that. Okay, so now I'm tediously going in here with the, with the Vallejo liquid old gold and I'm just dry brushing right on top of the, the wood. I'm just going in here real carefully. I'm just going to go slow. So I don't want to get this on the background of the wood I just did. Just like this. So now it looks like this has been maybe this some this scroll work has been gold leafed. And this guy, I'm just using the wood color as the kind of the patina. Like this, just gonna go real slow. This will take me a while, but I'd rather go slow and not mess up. This is gonna look good, nice. Just kind of using the flat part of the brush. I got a small, another smaller, pointy brush over here too to get kind of closer to some areas. I need to get into a tighter area. I'm going to do this, and then when I'm done, we'll come back and take a look. Okay, well that took like three hours to do, <laughs> but it looks good. So, uh, and it's been sealed again. So we'll let this dry for a little bit, and then um, there's some nail heads I got to paint on, this, on the wood, but the wood part is done. It looks really good. Um, I actually went in and did a little more shading around the gold um, uh, inlays or the whatever, or leaves and uh, it looks good, so when I seal it again, that'll pop out even more. Um, so the next step is to go in and base coat the rock. So um, I may take a little break, because my neck is killing me. I've been painting for like 10 hours a day so far. And uh, <coughs> so I may not get the top of the base done tonight, but we'll see. Um, I may save that for tomorrow. Um, again, it's looking good, just a lot of hand painting. Let's see what the heads look like on there, because I haven't put them on yet. These should be nice and dry now. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. I may do, uh, I may go back and hit these heads again. A little more dry brushing, but I think everything's looking really nice so far. Uh, I'm digging it. Uh, so yeah, let me clean up from doing the wood and stuff, and then we'll work on the rocks. Okay, so I thought I'd get this done today, but I'm calling it, I'm wrapping it, wrapping this for a day today because I'm exhausted. I've been painting for like 11 hours straight and my, I can't see straight. So I got the gold inlay done. I went back and I hit it again a little bit um, with the tiny brush from this view because I know it's like some of the tops of these little scrolls I missed. So I went back and hit those again. I put the heads back on just to see what it looks like. Also on uh, the Golden Soldier part, I wasn't digging the tone he was. He was too bright. So I actually, he needed like some warmth to him. He was too cold. Uh, the gold was too cold. So what I did is I actually went in with um, Transparent Scar Red from GarageKiss.us, which is actually kind of a red with a little bit of orange in it. And it knocked it down perfectly to the tone of gold I wanted. I did a little bit of shading here and there, and I just kind of misted it on randomly. But now we got this, a nice, much warmer tone of gold that maybe not be showing up too much in cameras. It's really shiny, but uh, now it's perfect. So it ties well together. 
base coat of the uh, the rocks with the custom mix of black, uh, gray, no black, white, and added just a hint of burnt umber in there just to warm it so it wasn't such a cold gray. So that's dried over, that's dried. I'll seal it tomorrow and then we'll do the dry brushing and the washes on the rock and then the base will be a wrap. And then everything is done except for the, the missing pieces that are the missing piece. So um, yeah, I'll wrap this up tomorrow and uh, we'll take a look at it with Hellboy on it. All right, picking up from where we left off yesterday, I'm just going through and dry brushing some neutral gray on top of the custom gray mix. This is neutral gray number two, so it's a lighter shade. Just dry brushing this on everything on the rocks, and then we're going to do another. I'm going to bring this up pretty bright, and then I'm going to go in and um, we'll see what we're going to do. I'm, going to kind of, I'm kind of using the prototype paint as a guide, so they got. Some different shades going on in there. Try not to get this on the, the wood. And if I do, it's no big deal. I can use a Q-tip and get it off. Right here, got some on there. Gotta be careful around those edges. They've got some kind of blue tint going on in the rocks, which I like. So let me do that with a like do a wash or something or um top of the gray lightly. Now you can see the letters better. You just want to hit the very top, so just use the flat part of the brush and it'll just hit the tops of everything. Don't use the bristles. Is kind of get everything the same tone overall, and then I'll go in and differentiate the, differentiate the center part. Um, I don't know. I'll we'll play with it here a little bit. I do have a picture. Let me see what this looks like. I think the only part that's different is this raised part. This is a, actually a Hellboy logo. It looks like that's been cut off or something. There's no great pictures of the base that I can see. So here's the front. Here's the front. 
So they go right up to here. Yeah, this looks like this is broken off here. So the thing we're going to do is do this. I can't tell. There's a ring here. Yeah, let's bring it all up and then I'll go in there with uh, some washes and some other colors to give some differentiate difference between the two areas of the base. So we'll get it all up nice and kind of the same tonal value. And then using washes will give them both a different kind of tone, color. There's some little rocks that kind of are strewn about a little bit onto the, oops. to the wood part. Trying to hit the top of this little rock and I got too much on. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, it's looking pretty good. What I like is it kind of got this kind of bluish green thing going on in the center of the of the base in this area. So we're gonna kind of do that, I think. Keep going back over because as it dries down, the uh, what I want to be pure white turns into a light gray. So I just keep going over it, building it up. So I want a pure white so that when I do a wash, it it goes down. Um, it gets tinted appropriately, the right the right value. Okay, it's looking pretty good. All right, I'm gonna wash up my brush and seal this and we'll come back. Okay, so I sealed everything. I base coated the boat, the bones and some bone and I've got my airbrush right now, some min Badger Minotaur Ghost Tints. This is green with a few drops of plasma blue. I'm lightly airbrushing it on the top. Add a little bit of water to it. Just so it'll be thinner and more transparent. I just gotta go slow because otherwise it'll beat up since there's water in there. And I put this, I base coated the skulls now so I'm gonna come in and kind of Spray around the edges of them a little bit, kind of blend them into the base. And then I'll do some final dry brushing on the skulls at the end. I got my air pressure down a little bit, just so I can avoid getting overspread in this outer ring.
and then I will go in the, the, the end, I will go add some more shadow detail and stuff with an airbrush. out back in my cup and I have just a little more blue to this it's looking a little green I want more like turquoise so I'm just gonna go in with some uh, plasma blue by itself kind of missed it on there we go a little more random Here goes since you're supposed to be able to spray them without, spray them without thinning, but they're pretty thick. Um, I'm gonna have a hard time getting to go through my airbrush right now. what I used on the, um, uh, what was that, the uh, Hulk base, which I believe was the, the Vallejo. Alright, where are those? Those are going to be over here, I think. Or, sorry, in front of the camera. I'm gonna pause and come back. Okay, so my airbrush, I got the Vallejo model wash. This is uh, for gray armor. It's called Blue Gray. It's what I use on the Hulk base, and it turned out really good. So I'm gonna use it here. Use the airbrush a little bit easier. These are they're super translucent, so we'll see all the tones underneath with the dry brush that we did. I'm gonna do the outer ring first, and then I'm gonna go in and do some on the I do the inner ring, and then do the outer ring. Actually, that might be a good shadow color. 
Let's see. And mix a little dark green in with that blue. Shadows with this. Shadows with a little mix of dark green and the blue. Some a little bit of mold maybe on the rocks. I like it. Nice contrast with the base on the bottom, it's all warm tones. transparent black to this.
I'm just in the shadow there, a little bit of transparent black to my blue and green mix. Just right into the airbrush. I may go back and dry brush very lightly some white on top of these rocks. So basically just some transparent black in here. variations going on here got the blues the greens I may do some um, light brown on top let's see Done with the center, I think. It's looking good. I'm gonna deepen these shadows some more. This is just transparent black by itself. have this all wrapped up today except for the missing part and another long project we've got two one six scale pieces coming up after this vinyls I never I've, I've worked with vinyl but I've never actually completed a vinyl kit <laughs> so it'll be a first okay I think this is looking pretty good I'm going to spray some transparent black into the, into the letters here. Just to bring them out a little bit. They're pretty dark already, but they're a dark gray, so I'm just going to darken them a little bit so they really stand out.
Okay, just that little bit really helps. Okay. Now I think just for the heck of it, what I got in here, I got. Um, I got a little bit. I'm gonna try to mist on some sepia here and there. Just a brown, which has a little bit of green in it, which, which kind of go. It's gonna come by appearing. Mist this on a little bit. Like right there is a good little spot. Just kind of breaks it up a little bit. I'm actually going to the skulls with this and then I'll dry brush over them. It's kind of flecking on for some reason. My airbrush is all dirty. Good. Just breaks up the kind of those blue and green tones a little bit. I'm gonna miss this on the outside edge a little bit. If I get this on the wood a little bit, it's no big deal because it's the same color I was using earlier. Outside gray, I want it to have some tone. somewhere. I'm getting there. I may go in with a little bit of this gray blue on the outside. Again, I don't want the outside to match the inside. Ooh, my airbrushes need a good cleaning. outside edge to bring it down a little bit what I'd like to do is let me get my airbrush to spray and clean the sucker out blue 
a little transparent black. shadows a little bit. Let me care if I don't get this on the, the wood part of the base. Just go slow, be careful. Barely pull the trigger out. all of this base done. talking because I'm just going in here and just hitting all the shadows not much to say kind of darkening things down so I see the whale see what I want to see transparent black and sepia in here. Seal this will be exactly where I want it. It's kind of hard to see when things are shiny because the reflections are kind of misleading you to what, what, what you're seeing.
I'm gonna come back and hit this outer ring from this side. Pretty much there. Seal this, and then I'm going to come back and dry brush the skulls and see what we look like. Okay, went and sealed everything. There, I got some of my bone color over here. I'm going to dry brush this on nice and light. to do so I'm going to use a different color I'm use elfic flesh the color's too watery elfic flesh is like a great color user for eyes bone it's like just the right perfect of off-white warm tone to it flesh. The bone's pretty much done, it's just adding a highlight to it. That should dry down nicely. Okay, I think those look pretty good. because my camera's so high, but. I have a hard time getting just the right amount of paint on this little guy over here.
Let's see, uh, by painting the skulls first and then doing the colors, it looks like they've been sitting there for a while and the mold and stuff has kind of grown on top of them, along with the rocks. Now I do want to see, just for the hell of it, what it looks like if I very, very lightly dry brush a few white highlights on some of this rock. That's looking good. We're gonna do a little bit of this. Add some highlights here and there. Just barely touching the brush to it. I don't think I'll do anything on the outer edge. I'm, I'm not putting any pressure on the brush, I'm the brush, just the weight of the brush do this. So the lighter I push, the less dramatic the effect. So I can kind of control how much of a highlight I put on. Let's see how I get confused with the front of the base. This is the front right here. I think that looks pretty damn good. Maybe just a few little wisps on here. I said I wasn't gonna do anything in the front. No, 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 I do it. <laughs> Ugh, can never make up my mind. Just very light. I get more spam calls in a day. No calls for jobs. All people ask me if I want to update my uh, home warrant, my auto warranty, or just spam calls. It's so annoying. Come this way a little bit. Okay, I think I'm happy with this. I'll give it one more coat of sealer and then we'll put everything together and see how it looks. Normally, I, lately I've been doing a slideshow at the end of my work in progress videos because I wait to upload the last video until after I've taken photos, but I can't take photos of this. Oh, I've got one more thing I gotta do. I gotta, I gotta paint these two pipes. I gotta put some of the trinkets on the head. I got a few more steps, but I can seal this and see what it looks like, and then I'll do the rest. 
Okay, so I sealed the base. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to fix this pipe that broke the other day. So what I did is I drilled a hole, a 332nd inch hole into this end. And I got a 332nd inch rod, brass rod here. And what I gotta do is I gotta figure out the right bend for this to go in. Now, it looks like Okay, so this is gonna go here, like that. It only fits in one way. I figure that out. I'm pretty sure it goes this way. I mean, technically it fits in another way, but. The trick is to find out which way it fits in better. Okay, so this goes like this. Okay, so this pipe comes out from here. Okay. I probably could have done it with a uh, 16th inch brass rod, but. Okay, so we're gonna do this. So I gotta build this up with um, some A's and let it dry overnight. Sorry, I'm off camera here, bending this wire. a little bit at a time. Almost there. I just drilled a hole a little bit deeper. I just used a pin vise for that. I didn't use a drill. So just a pin vise. And it doesn't like to drill into this really hard resin. there. I 
And there we go. <laughs> so now I'm going to um, cover this with Aves. I'm going to actually pull this out a little bit more. centered. So I need to glue this in. I need to put a mark how far this goes in to the hole. Actually doesn't go in very far, it's fine. I'm just using this as an armature. And just put some notches in the in this so the glue has something to stick to. And I'll get some glue. So there we go. So I got a pipe. At least I got a, a um, piece of rod that's going to turn into a pipe. Scuff this up. have something to stick to. Okay. And then we'll get our eggs out. Mix it up. After this, um, I'll put this to the side to dry. Um, I could probably paint it in about four or five hours. It'll be hard enough. say to let it sit for a minute so I am gonna let this sit for a minute and then we'll put it on there and we'll try to sculpt it. I'm gonna put just a little bit of Vaseline into the into the key on this other piece and then hopefully I can um, it'll hold while it dries and it'll, 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 the key will fit and then I can just clean out the Vaseline with a little bit of soapy water out of that key. Alright so I'm gonna let this sit for a minute and we'll come back. 
All right, so let the babe sit for about three or four minutes. It says to do that for better workability. I've never done it in the past, but why not? Let's follow the instructions for once. Uh, so I'm gonna just take a little bit of this and kind of roll it in my fingers. Oops, drop it on the floor. I'm gonna wrap this brass rod, brass rod, brass rod in it. And we'll use my amazing sculpting skills to make this look as close to possible as the original. A sculptor I am not. I think this is, as this hardens over the next few hours, it'll be easier to kind of shape. Sometimes it's too malleable. Overlap the other piece a little bit. So I get this pretty close. I'm gonna, I've got a little bit of Vaseline in, in the key where this is going to plug into. And hopefully it works. I don't care if this tube looks perfect. It's gonna get all painted and weathered anyway. shape of the key but it keeps coming make some too much material take some of it off
the guys at Sculpt have some serious talent. I don't know how they do it. I think I may let this sit up for a little while and then I'll push it in there. So I'm gonna sit up for a few hours and I'll, and I'll key it. Okay, after the pa over the past few hours, I've finished putting the trinkets on Hellboy. I've painted these little nail heads that I forgot to do earlier on the base. My Aves has dried enough so where I put in the key and it stayed. So I'm gonna let that dry and then uh, this piece is fixed. We'll paint that along with the other tube. Um, so I'm gonna call this work in progress done. And this is the end of the project because until I get that last missing piece, there's nothing I can do and I don't want to record another work in progress later. So let's put it all together and see what we look like. So I'll probably, um, it won't be a slideshow at the end of this one, unfortunately, but let's see what it looks like. So this is also an assembly video. I'll do an, uh, I'll do a separate video for now. Nah, I'll call this my assembly video for my client too. So these go together. They only go one way. And this will all be packed separately in the box. And then this piece I glued together. There was two pieces I glued these together. These fit in and it only fits one way. There's a key. Like so. Nice fit. This fits into the base. One way, just like that. Now you can put Hellboy on. So as I showed, um, I did magnetize the boots so they can be packed separately. So those go on. And then Hellboy goes in the base. Let's see if I can find the key. And he goes right on like that. This is the first time I've had this all together. So, pretty exciting. Now, let me start putting him together. Pretty easy. There's only one order you have to, one thing you have to do um, in a certain order. Put the torso on next. The upper body, I should say. And it goes on. And then this is the one thing I like to do next. I like to put these little side pieces on before the pouches. Because they're they're a close fit and it's just easier to get the get these on now. Um, no, with the pouch on, they just slide right in. I'm not going to glue these on because I'm afraid they would get broken in shipping, but they fit very nicely. So I did that, and they'll go on one side, they'll fit on one side. Now we can do the pouches, and I think these are all interchangeable. I think not that, that there's one magnet that's, that's different from the rest, you'll figure it out. It's not hard, okay? Pouches are on. Now we can do the gun and the knife. Okay, just magnetized. Boom. Boom. The grenades, I don't know if I'm gonna glue them on or not. Um, I'm just afraid these little these little handles will get broken in shipping, so I may leave them loose. They're not magnetized, but it's a snug fit. I don't have magnets that small. Okay, that takes care of the belt. And then we can put on the other arm, which is magnetized. With the Fist of Doom. Okay, these two are magnetized together. And that goes in. And then you can put on the new auto spear. Again, when I said this earlier, it fits, it fits better this way. You're not going to hit the fist of doom if it's in this way. So I suggest putting it in that way. If, if you put it in this way, you're going to hit the fist of doom. So I suggest putting it in this way. Just like that. And it is a chrome finish. It's delicate. So you got to be careful when handling the chrome finish. And the tail. Boom. We can put on the other parts of the base. Again, these two pieces just kind of go wherever you want. There's a pipe that goes into here that will be uh, glued on later, but I'm going to paint that with the other pipe. So these are just kind of pieces of wreckage from the 
golden army soldier. Then you get two skulls, put them wherever you want. Oh, I gotta put the heads around the sides. Um, I'll, pro I'll, I'll label the horns and the, and the head so you know which horns go with which head. They are specific. And the heads do fit a little bit better in certain sockets, so just, as you find that, you'll feel that they're just tighter because all the magnets are custom fit to each spot. I think these fit a little bit better this way. And you'll know if they fit better because it'll pull in snug uh, tighter against the base. Okay. Now it's just a matter of saying which head you want to put on. Let's start off with the I personally like the short haired version better. There. And then with him you can either do the the pistol. I went ahead and glued on that rope. I fixed it and glued it on. Or you can do the big Gatling gun. I dig the big Gatling gun. It's just so over the top. And there you go. Looks really good, I think. So a lot of, I don't even know how many hours I put into this thing. Probably, uh, it's at least a week and a half of work. So even though the kit was really high quality, there was some prep work I had to do. I added magnets to the head, to the arms, to the gun, um, to the boots. Um, yeah, and then having to fix that pipe. But uh, most, of all the, most of the time in paint work you know, 50 hours of paint, at least, if not more. Let's come down and take a look here. Some more light on the base. The base turned out really nice. Looks good. The shading I did on the on this piece yesterday looked really good, so I'm glad I did that. Again, we're just missing the pipe that goes in there that I fixed, and there's a pipe that goes in this piece which I haven't painted, so I'm just gonna paint those off camera and put them on later. These skulls turned out really nice. The new water spear looks amazing. I'm really happy with that. Show that off a little bit. Focus. Yeah, this looks really good. Just wanted to focus on the background. There we go. Nice chrome effect. And of course, we got all the leather. It took forever to hand paint. And unfortunately, there's two missing pieces. Like I said, I'd be surprised if I get those within the next month. I'd be really surprised. The last time I had to wait for a replacement part, it was three, four months with COVID going on. I don't know. I personally think they should cast it and overnight ship it to me, no matter what it costs on their dime, since they missed the piece. Fist of Doom. The red looks really good. It's a perfect shade of red for him. Look really good. That's with my exposure a little bit. Get some more light on them. Switch out the heads again for this. For the to switch them out, you got to take off the the short. Obviously, got to take the bullets off.
Then you slide down the long hair. I'm gonna take the Gatling gun off because it does interfere a little bit with the long horns. You can display it with it, but they do want to touch a little bit. Put the hair on, put the head on, make sure it's sitting well, and put the bolts back on, and you're good to go. These aren't magnetized either. Those are just, again, a good fit. And then we'll put on the pistol so that fits better with the horns. There you go. So, um, yeah, I thought the Narrow and Tail Boy had a lot of detail. This one, this one blows it out of the water as far as like detail and sculpt. Well, I shouldn't say sculpt. The sculpts are different, but this one has a lot more detail going on. Um, so, yeah. So, there you go. Um, for those who watch, I appreciate it. Oh, here are the trinkets on the belt. So, they provide two loops to attach them. I switched out the chain. They gave you a silver chain. I didn't like that, so I went to like a, a brass gold chain. And it changed out the loops. Um, so yeah, they, they give you two spots to hang the trinket. So you got the bone, the cross, and the skull, and that looks really good. The leather looks really amazing. All the metallics look really good. So there it is. Master Solid Hellboy kit. I think other than the prototype, this may be the first one that's gotten painted. Uh, so I asked Soul about. So on day one about a replacement parts like wow already that's quick, but there you go. Thanks to everyone who's watched this progress or these the series. I really appreciate it. Um, the next projects uh, actually have two projects for the same client. They're one sixth scale vinyl figures from Star Trek. So we'll get going on those in the next day or two. But as always, thanks for watching. Uh, take care. We'll see you next time. Bye.